Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. My name is David. This is a, a weekly question and answer video I do every single Monday, uh, part one. Uh, for all of you joining me that are new, welcome. Hello, thank you. Uh, if you could help me, what I'm doing is just answering people's questions that have experienced some kind of trauma in their life and I'm trying to help them get through this and heal from it and understand it and feel better. You could really help me, all of you, by subscribing to my channel and giving me a thumbs up or thumbs down, tell me why, say hi in the comment section, share this video places, uh, post it in different social media accounts, maybe put it in a playlist, stuff like that would really help me. Thank you very, very much. Um, something I like to do every once in a while is uh, recommend something called Shane's Law Petition. Shane was a victim of a nasty narcissist sh uh, smear campaign and it happened for so long, it was so insidious and Shane ha didn't know where to go, didn't have any answers, couldn't find help, couldn't make it stop. And sadly, he took his own life. And somebody so uh, made sure that Shane doesn't die in vain and decided they want to make sure society doesn't keep doing this and accept this kind of behavior from people and narcissists. They created something called Shane's Law Petition. It hopes to start a law to stop this kind of stuff. And if you guys could uh, help me out and help Shane out and help other people who have experienced this and will experience this in the future, if you could just go down below to the um, link I have down into the description box down there, and there's a link that says Shane's Law Petition, follow that and just check mark it, sign it. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Um, I usually recommend something every single week. And I didn't think about something to recommend this week yet. And what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'll try and recommend some things you guys can do during this horrible um, crisis that we have, worldwide crisis. And there's people in countries that have already had this virus and uh, hit them quite a while ago. And it's going through and uh, maybe hopefully coming down the infection rate. America has been hit. And we are still climbing. There's some countries that haven't really been hit yet that hard, if at all. Um, don't panic. Don't need to hoard. Think about other people. Be patient. Be tolerable. Be respectful to the people around you. And also tolerate them. Be, let's have some tolerance, okay? Um, if we all do the social distancing, but really stay at home for hardcore. The harder you do it, the quicker this could stop and we can get things going back to normal. Um, I'm for opening things up as soon as the peak starts near, uh, flattening. And I think, and I'm really hopeful. I've been watching this thing a lot and I really think that this is going to slow down in a week or two, big time. And I think we're gonna slowly start opening up. Um, so we can get back to our lives, I hope. Anybody who has <clears throat> suffered from this virus, who is suffering now, I am sorry. I hope for a speedy recovery. Anybody that knows anybody suffering from this, I hope a speedy recovery for everybody. Uh, anybody that's gonna get sick, I wish a speedy recovery. Anybody that's lost somebody from this, I'm very, very sorry. Very, I hope you're coping with this, okay? Being secluded. I know some people can't even go to people's funerals right now. It's pretty bad. Real sad. Um, I can't wait till this dies down and this slows down. Uh, but as far as advice, you know, please, I, I, I try to encourage you guys to give advice. If you could, man, everybody just recommend some one thing. That would be huge on, on things that you know that have helped you get through this. Advice you know that could help people... Um, not get sick, not spread it, and get through this um, isolation period, this quarantine. Um, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, that the reason people are freaking out right now, tip, most reasons people are, is it's over deprivation, physical deprivation. And it's also, and the reason is, is because they have emotional deprivation. They're not meeting their emotional needs, and I can't stress it enough, that once you are very tied to yourself and meeting your emotional needs, you aren't so rooted and tied to your physical needs. You aren't freaking out about this stuff at all. I can't explain it enough. Meet your emotional needs. <clears throat> but please, everybody, go down there and recommend something. That'd be just awesome.
right now. Um, so let's get started with the first question from KM in AZ, Arizona. Hello. After years of experiencing insidious gaslighting, I find myself overthinking everything I do. Or you find yourself overthinking everything you do and still have a hard time remembering. How can you stop self-gaslighting yourself? Thank you. You're welcome. So I take this, since I'm not in conversation with you, I can't ask you. I'm taking it that you're overanalyzing things or, or maybe you're just ruminating what this is, what you might be doing is this, you might be trying to cope with your anxiety. I don't know. You're not right here to talk to about, but I would pay attention to anxiety. I get clients often, often that don't even realize they've had horrible anxiety their whole life. I'm not kidding. I'll ask somebody, somebody could be, you know, in their fifties. I'll ask them, this happens so often. I'll ask them how anxiety is for them. What does that mean to them? Anxiety. I try to be vague so they can tell me. And they'll, they'll tell me, oh, fine. None. I'm like, you, and I'll be like, wow, um, you just went through some major trauma and you, you have lived with someone for a few years who abused you and you have no problems with anxiety and you're way stressed right now and you can't sleep and you, no anxiety, huh? And they're like, nope. And I, and I, I tell them what anxiety is and they're like, oh yeah, that? Oh yeah, I've had that forever. And, I'll, and then I even say, well, really, you've had it a lot? And they're like, oh yeah, you know, a lot every day. And I'll say every day, they say, yeah, every day. And they say it like, like, doesn't everybody? And then I have to tell them, well, no, people don't have problems with anxiety like this. And they're like, oh wow, really? And, and it's the first time they even started thinking about this awful feeling that they've had and carried around with them their whole life. So, this might be a way that you're dealing with anxiety. I don't know. I'm just going to assume without making too much of an ass out of myself. Um, <clears throat> most of us have been raised neglected, emotionally neglected. And since they neglect our emotions, what our body's doing, then we take over and we neglect our emotions and we ignore what our body does and things that feel bad. And the biggest thing with parenting, with bad parenting and neglectful parenting is it leaves us believing that we need to control things and that there always is a way to control things and there isn't. A lot of this stuff, my guess, is you're thinking about how can you control things or how could you have controlled things better in the past, right? Something like that. And you believe by, you believe that, I, I, you, I'm guessing that you have anxiety about stuff and you sit and you think about it and ruminate hard enough. And this is a way that we believe is calming our anxiety or having some control over it. What, what could I do? What should I have done? And we just keep thinking and thinking and thinking, not realizing that for one, this is the past, it's over, we have no control over it. And two, we can't control people and situations all the time. We may not be able to, we have no control over this stuff and it's not serving us and things like this. And we think it's controlling our anxiety when it's actually make our, making our anxiety worse. That might be what you're doing. And, and you want to know how to stop. Oh, and then you have a hard time remembering these. This all seems like a, a reaction to trauma. Yeah. Post stress from trauma, past trauma or, or stress now from you know, a post reaction to past trauma. There you go. And we need to process these things. We need to process all this stuff. And I can't stress enough. This, the, the theme for this Q and a straight up is professional help after trauma period, because I can't stress it enough. If you guys have never done it, and especially successfully, then you, you're not understanding maybe what you're missing and to try to do this stuff alone, I, I think might be impossible. I think so. I remember, you know, at one point CPTSD and things like this were deemed 
uh, incurable for life. So to, to think you can do it by yourself is just, and, and how many years it might take. We need to process everything that happened. Talk about it with somebody. You by yourself, I guess. Write it down, <clears throat> and I and I I recommend this huge. Record yourself and then listen to it later. Videotape yourself and watch yourself. It is huge. Part of talk therapy with another person is just listening, hearing yourself say it. A lot of times the answers are in here and we come up with them, especially if we can find them ourselves, but be prompted by someone else to do so. We find answers and we feel good about it. We feel confidence. A lot going on when you do that. But if we're thinking about things that don't serve us, that we're past, that, that, that we have no control over, and we're trying to find a way to control it and things like this, you're just going to keep going in circles forever, forever, forever. And I'm just going to tell you, don't do it, right? I'm going to tell you to try to replace that with something else. Okay. You try to stop that thinking, you try to literally stop yourself and go do some kind of activity. Force yourself to think about something else, listen to something. But really we need to, we need to digest this, what you're thinking about and come to terms with the situation and how it is and realize that we may not be able to change or control what you're thinking about every, all the time. And there's just so much to learn. Realize that you aren't your thoughts. We have thoughts. We have a voice in our head. And it's this inner dialogue that helps keep us, keeps us safe. All our brain cares about is keeping us safe. And so that voice keeps us safe. And if you're not keeping yourself safe, like letting people hurt you and abuse you and then leave you without any answers. And then you're going to be ruminating your brain. Your, the voice in your head is going to be going crazy. And that's depression, situational depression. There's a lot going on and we need to understand it. And I'm telling you, that's why professionals help more than just friends. Friends are good too. Friends are good for just getting it out, venting, bouncing things off of them. That helps. But what, what's, what's too bad is trauma means you don't understand it, and I doubt your friends or your family are going to. Okay? Thanks. I hope that answers your question. How can you stop? Replace it with something else, right? But we need, the core issues is we need to process what happened and understand it. Talk about, it. talk to somebody. Thanks. Uh, sunny day. Don't know where you're from, and that leads me to, please, Everyone, tell us your locations, locations, locations. I'm going to just keep drilling it. Um, locations. Please tell us where you are. Guess. I mean, I mean, make something up if you're worried about someone knowing where you are. Be general. Planet Earth. The Western Hemisphere. The Southern Hemisphere down in Australia. The, you know, come on. Please. Thank you. So, Sunny Day left me a very long question, which is okay. But I've got to shorten it. I'm not going to read that much. And it was so many details that I also didn't need to know um, to answer your question. Just so many. So I just, and I hope it's okay. Um, if I miss something, please ask me again. If, if I don't understand, ask me again. If you don't understand, just keep asking everybody. I will never miss someone's question on purpose. I'll at least answer it right there in the comment section or here in the video. So, and, and I might just miss it on accident. So ask me again and I might misunderstand. Okay. I, I wrote down some of the biggest points I thought. Sunny day. I dated my ex. So... You went back and you dated. I'm going to try and leave all the details out to not even confuse other people, but I read it all. I, I remember too about your father and stuff. I'm sorry. You went back to your hometown. Uh, you started dating your ex again. You later found out that while you were dating him, he was also dating someone else. You decided to tell her about the two of you. And then what happened, it backfired in your face and they were kind of both harassing you or she was harassing you. And then you went no contact for both of them for 47 days. You decided to take him back again. I'm sorry if I have this wrong. I think you said you took him back. 
You kept speaking with the girl, though. And he was, too. He was speaking with her, too. But neither of you were telling each other. And you kept saying, big mistake, big mistake. You know, all kinds of big mistakes here. All kinds of big mistakes. Uh, she told him... So she told him that you. she was talking to you and then told him everything you said plus made up a bunch of more stuff and said a bunch more stuff and then lured him back to go back to her with a new dog and a new job, money, flight. And he left and took it and said he needed to work. And then after a little while, then he started telling you that, that he likes you again, I think. And then you said you wanted commitment by him after this. Because he was telling you, I think he was telling you he loves you. Could be wrong, I'm sorry if I'm wrong about that. Then it went back and forth between myself and her. He kept going back and forth. She doesn't love him. Now you're saying she doesn't love him. Because she told you she's just using him. And you can't understand why he goes back to her. Why is he fooled? How do I let it all go? All we worked for. We were finally getting on the right track until she decided to interfere. There is so much processing that needs to happen with this. Something I and, and I and I do this with my clients. I start right from the beginning. And I start right from the time you guys started dating. And I and I remember I remember you said it was you guys married at 18. This has been going on for a while. You, you don't have all your you don't have all the information or maybe it's there but you're not taking it in cognitively you're just not because I have a feeling you have some morals that you value and and I have a feeling he doesn't and you're saying that everything was you're getting on the right track and you're blaming her as if he had no control it it doesn't matter. If he loved you and then valued that love and he was committed to your relationship with you and he valued that, then she wouldn't be, other people can't interfere. People can't interfere in my relationships. It's up to me. I, I don't sit and listen. I don't talk to another. He, I, I mean, we need to be, it's just so much and someone needs to do this with you and take the time with you. you. You are worthy of this. Please find a way to process this stuff. And it just seems like it'll be very difficult for you to do this by yourself. There's so much I do with clients. I can't just sit here and do it right now like this with you. I have to do it with you. I have clients write lists out so it's right in front of them. And I ask them very, very specific thinking thoughtful questions to make people really start thinking and not be able to lie to themselves anymore. There's just so much. The fact that he is he harassed you and he's he's let he let this other girl harass you. That's not okay with you, right? It's not just her. He's dating someone like that. He's he's dishonest. There's got to be a bunch of dishonesty going on here. Do you like dishonest people? Whose fault is that? Is that not his fault? Is that her fault? There's just so much. You 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 can't really like this guy. And then we need to find out why. What what's going on? How are you really feeling? What's in that subconscious of yours that's telling you that you need this guy? You want this guy. You are vulnerable. There's just so much, so much. I, I hope I, that I make a little sense. It, 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 when it's this much, it's like you're asking me to tell you, you're asking me to treat you right here, right now. And I just can't. I can't. This is so much. If you just had one question, one little question, why did he do this? But this is your whole relationship. This is somebody you married or something you met at 18 years old, high school sweetheart maybe. And it's just ongoing years. I don't know if you're divorced now. 
you got divorced maybe and he goes back and forth with you and other women i would imagine your self-worth is so incredibly low after all this stuff i'm so sorry you got involved in someone so fast so quick so young big void from our childhood um you went 47 days no contact and you took him back it sounds like you've taken him back quite a bit very unstable and you, you probably don't have much support in your life and you need really really need that to make big decisions to stop this but you got to stop this with him oh my and if you can't do it by yourself then ask for help from someone okay more than just questions right right here and just keep asking questions though don't stop we got to understand there's so much to understand this, this all is stemming from your childhood. You should be able to connect dots. This guy represents maybe your own father. This, this guy, your, maybe your father kept or abandoned you. Maybe your father cheated on your mom, was totally emotional, emotionally absent, maybe unstable, going back and forth, coming in and out, leaving all the time, coming back. I don't know, but... If you can't see this, which is almost impossible to see by yourself, I would have somebody help point that out to you. Okay? I, I can't. I don't know you. I'm not, you're not here. I'm, this isn't a conversation. It's too much. Even if this was live video, I mean, I'd, we, it would take an hour just to start with. You know? You're worth it. All of you guys are worth help. If you can't do it by yourself, get help. Uh, thank you. And Suzanne, um, I don't know your location. Please tell us your locations, guys. Tell us where you're at. Thank you. Suzanne says, and I hope it's Suzanne, not Susan. Suzanne, when I texted my ex, I finally know, I finally know who the hell you are. Did I afflict a narc injury or not? So your ex, you believe, is a narcissist, and you texted him. I finally know who, who the hell you are after you discovered he's a narcissist. And you want to know how he feels. You know, obviously, I don't know. I don't know him, right? And so I'd be just guessing. So you, you're asking me, typically, maybe, do most narcissists? Well, a narc injury. It's, and you can take this however you want if this is a nar narcissistic injury. But it's, it's shaming. It's shaming. And... Well, I mean, you're, you're very general too, but actually you're saying, I finally know who the hell you are. That, that could be, you finally know he's great. You, you finally, you're finally on his side that he's the most amazing person in the world. <laughs> but, but narcissists have zero confidence. None. They're full of shame. They don't know who the hell they are. Bad people, insufficient, not good enough, things like this. So they're going to assume you mean something bad. They're already a little paranoid and stuff like this, right? So he's most likely going to assume you don't mean that he's so great. You're going to assume that he's so bad. And, and, and does that mean he, he knows you know? Who knows? We don't know if he knows that he has a personality disorder. I'm assuming he does. We don't know that he knows that. We don't know if he knows these terms or whatever. And some narcissists aren't offended. Some narcissists don't care. Like, yeah, I'm a narcissist. Some narcissists, yeah, will deny it up and down. They're all a spectrum. They're all different. You know, so hard to know, Suzanne. But typically, just anything bad to a narcissist, they can't take. They don't know who they are. And that's why what people say hurts people. You guys, who have, the, 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 the people out there that get the most offended by what people say, know themselves the least. Seriously. I know who I am. So I don't need people to tell me how great I am. And I also don't, I'm not saying I'm so great, but I don't, it doesn't do much to me. And I, it would, and also in turn, it doesn't do much to me when people say bad things about me. It doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. I've been pushed really to the, to the maximum with this and it doesn't why because i know who i am 
And I know that people need to know who they are. And nobody else gets to decide that about except each person. You know? And you can be delusional on who you are, but the idea is to be conscious, aware. Um, so they don't know who they are, Suzanne. And he doesn't know who he is if he's a narcissist. If he has narcissistic personality disorder, he does not know who he is himself inside there. He's ego. Ego is outside of our skin, out where our skin stops. Ego starts. It's the outside. It's not really me. It's how I present myself. It's what people see, right? So if if that's how I live and that's my identity, then then somebody who knows me, Suzanne, my ex girlfriend, wife, tells me I know who you are. I'm already suspicious and paranoid because I'm a narcissist and I have lots of low self esteem and massive shame. So I I'm just going to assume you expect the worst. You know, that I'm just a piece of crap. You, but he may just think you're saying, you know that he lied to you. He, you know now that he's a player. And a lot of narcissists, if they don't want anything to do with you anymore, they're done with you. They may not care. So he may not care. This is a good way I've seen for some narcissists, for some relationships, this has been a good way to get rid of narcissists who won't leave you alone or keep coming back every once in a while. Keep clinging, keep hanging on like a hanger. <laughs> it's it, You can sometimes tell them, but I know you have a personality disorder. I know you're a narcissist. And a lot of times that's just deal off for a narcissist. They're done. They can't handle the shame or they know they won't get anywhere with you anymore. And they're gone. That's a good way to do it. Thank you. Next question is from Krissa in Florida. Hello, Krissa. And thanks for telling me where you are, your location. Hi, David. I'm concerned most about vulnerable people getting the virus from these people that are not staying home, still doing things they like to do. Um, yeah, I understand, man. You know, right now is a time where we're looking at people, judging people. I've done it. I've gotten sick of people in general, and I'm, I'm, I'm not happy and not impressed. I'm, I'm uh, not proud to be a human being right now, uh, a little embarrassed to be a human. Um, this is the time to focus on you, on yourself, really. I mean, right? I mean, what, what more time than a world pandemic where we have to isolate and quarantine ourselves at home all day? Don't start judging other people and looking at other people too much. We don't want to judge people anyways, but you're not judging people. You're worried about people just wanting to go about and doing their own lives and let them, okay? It doesn't mean that you are going to get sick. I know you're worried about vulnerable people, but the vulnerable people don't need to be out and about getting sick either. They need to be at home. I understand, but you don't have any control over this, Krissa. Nothing you can do, right? I can give you 10 more problems to worry about with, uh, with, with no answer. Things you can't do anything about if you want. Don't worry about it. Everybody's going to be okay no matter what anyways. Chris. Chris with a K from the United Kingdom. Hello, Chris. Oh, from the sunny. From sunny UK. It's actually sunny over there. Don't you guys get like three days of sun? Over there in England. Uh, and I know you're in England. Um, hello, David. Hello, Chris. My ex-wife keeps emailing my mother the same email in form of an article. My mother just ignores the email. I know that borderlines can be sentimental and struggle to let go. Is it about vulnerability? I would really appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Um, well, something that I can point out right away... Borderlines don't have a stable sense of who they are at all. And that's why they kind of hold on to the past so much. <clears throat> they also never healed from their existing traumas. Borderline is a reaction to trauma. All the way until it becomes a personality disorder. Until it becomes who you are. And borderlines are the unhealed victim. Okay. So they focus on the past a lot. Um. The, the past was always more traumatic than you thought it was. It's always more traumatic as time goes on. It gets worse. You were, Chris, you were just a bad, you were just a bad boyfriend to her. I'm not saying that, but you know what I mean. She blames you. You're so bad. You were just bad. Now, as time goes on, you're getting worse and worse, maybe. Or maybe better and better, depending on what they want, how delusional they are. 
You said, is this about vulnerability? And, and I'm not sure what you mean. Please ask me again, Chris. Could you ask me again more about this question? I'd like to answer it more. But what I see, what might be is that she's not letting go of you. She wishes she could talk to you, but instead she's taking the next best thing, your mother. And that might be vulnerability. She's afraid to be vulnerable, afraid to talk to you, afraid to ask you stuff like this because you might shoot her down, you might hurt her. But the biggest thing to realize is borderlines never know really what they want and it doesn't matter because it changes like a light switch from one second to the next. And you're so great right now, Chris, maybe if that, she may just be bored, whatever, but she'll switch that switch and hate you. And you know that because you've been married to her. Uh, I would ask your mother, if it keeps continuing, maybe just ask your mother to politely ask her to stop. And then at a certain point, ask your mother, say, Mom, if that's all that happens and she just continues to send you a message every once in a while and you don't reply, you don't need to tell me. Thanks, Chris. I'm going to stop right here, too. Because that's about time, I think. Yep, I'm going to stop right now. Thanks, guys. That was part one. I'll see you in part two. Okay, if you could, please, again, subscribe. Please um, like, dislike, comment, share this somewhere, post this somewhere, put him in playlists if you can, just temporary something. It'll really help me. Thanks, guys. Love yourself first, and I'll see you in